are watching Illum TV, Igniting the Heart's Intelligence. I'm Kelly Marlowe. Today I'm speaking with Alicia Datner, an award-winning comedian who has been featured in various media outlets. I mean, I want a relationship, but I don't want a relationship. <laughs> <You know? laughs> She has created the Spiritual Comedy Festival with others in bringing comedy that's serious to enlighten those who are incensed and to incense those who are enlightened. She's here with us today to talk about how she's intertwining spirituality with comedy. Alicia, thank you for being with us today. I and other people, we, we all release through laughter, whether it's stress or tension, or releasing something that we need to let go, as well as seeing everything on the lighter side. But I never thought deeply about how spirituality can be intertwined with comedy. Can you tell us more about how you see the two being intertwined? I have a sense that all of the great art forms and spirituality at the highest levels are are really essentially the same thing. If you see an amazing speech from a, a writer, or if you see an amazing darshan from a spiritual teacher, or you see a great comedian, the same effect happens for every audience. That's my experience. As it, as it filters down, it sort of comes into the duality, and you start to see, oh, this is kind of like this, and this is kind of like this, and different people have different ideas about how it's supposed to be. So I'm interested in the levels of excellence where people go to gather together and have an experience where they're moved and transformed and they come out different than how they were before and they remember that they're whole and they remember that everything is okay and their lives are better and they've laughed and their whole nervous system is relaxed and their biology is transformed. So that's how I see it. How are you doing it through the spiritual comedy festival, though? How does, well, how does that work in terms of, there's a theme, obviously, right, that ties to it, and in, in helping people to release, helping people to feel joy, and helping people to let go what's holding them back. So I did the first version of the spiritual comedy festival about a year ago, and it, my intention was to take the two parts of my life that are disparate, the spiritual side where, um, where our intention is to bring light to all of the parts of our lives and to live at a higher vibration, and the comedic side where my intention is really to be irreverent and playful and not take everything so seriously. So it was a personal experience of wanting to unite these two pieces for myself. Are there certain themes that you're planning to touch on that ties into the theme of spirituality or, um, or the things that we just struggle with? Yeah, so I, I think what I think of as spiritual humor has for me been evolving where at first it was just I didn't want to go to a comedy club anymore because it just felt yucky. So I searched out what other possibilities there are. Can we tell stories or can we do solo performance or can we just share ourselves on stage in a way that's more vulnerable and um, softer in some way and kinder, but also doesn't lose the edge of irreverence and playfulness. And so I found uh, I found all of these people who are already doing it, and I started doing it myself. And then I started to realize that it needs to be expanded even further. So it's so on one hand, we're using spiritual concepts to make fun of things and to to sort of bring more light into the darkness. And then on the other hand, we're also making fun of spirituality, uh, so that we take ourselves less seriously. To as you read on my website, enlighten the incensed and incense the enlightened. Some, the, the whole point, according to many people of the spiritual path, is to begin to loosen our aspects 
of who we think we are so that we can hold our identity more loosely. And that sometimes people start to take their spiritual path as their identity. And so they're recreating the thing that they meant to let crumble. And if people don't at least want a little bit to have a little lightness about that, I don't need to play in that game because I don't want to offend anybody. But what I, and maybe I don't communicate this because I'm not interested in being out about it, but here I am being out about it. Um, I just basically have the philosophy that everything is spiritual, no matter what it is. Everything light and everything dark is here for a purpose. And so uh, the ground that I walk on, the foundation that I live with, the, the basis for everything that I do, I think of as spiritual. That's my, my, sacred, my sacred self. My sa everything is sacred. And so for me, once we go from everything is sacred, then everything can be playful and funny. So it's not like I'm sacrificing one for the other. It's like, this is my ground. This is the thing I walk on. And so no matter where we go from here, it's always based on this truth. So those who take spirituality too seriously, they're holding on to something and they're holding on to this path. So it's almost like they're going in reverse of being spiritual because they can't let go and laugh about it, laugh about their path yeah, or, uh, or their focus on it. And this is where it could be a true test as to whether they can actually laugh about it or not, right? Yeah, I mean, I definitely encounter both spiritual uh, I don't know if the word seeker is a really great word, but, but people on a spiritual path, as well as spiritual teachers who are wary of my work and wary of you know, not wanting to be made fun of. And I totally get that. And at the same time, I think we should just make fun of ourselves. <laughs> I think that's, that's part of the point. And if it's not fun as well as fulfilling, I think in some ways people are looking for experience too. Just to, what's the experience you want to have in your life? Do you want it to be serious? And do you want it to feel, um, I mean, I think pure is a great feeling. I think clear is a great feeling. I also think light and breezy is a great feeling. So the takeaway then is to be able to laugh about your own spirituality and not to take it so seriously. Yeah. Because you have to be like, yeah, that's part of it is to be spiritual is to be able to let go of whatever it is, including spirituality. Really well said. <laughs> I agree. So how, how do you do that? How? Um, I love when comedians are just, joking about whole foods and kale chips and um, yoga and just being totally irreverent. And then also taking a step back and I think the real subversive thing now is actually joking about that stuff and making fun of our sort of spiritual bubble, but also making fun of the not spiritual stuff or the quote unspiritual or the way of being unconscious. So I think that's kind of the next level of where, quote, spiritual comedy is headed. I mean, in my belief, everything is spiritual. So I'm actually even like just sort of dropping the word. I'm, it's, it's, it's too big of a catch-all now. And I'm more interested in just bringing the light and the dark together. So tell me about the Grand Cosmo joke. The Grand Cosmic joke? Yes. So the Grand Cosmic joke obviously maybe is as old as the cosmos, but when I discovered it, uh, I was probably doing a medicine journey. <laughs> and I had this sense that this very moment is absurd and hilarious and perfect. And that pain exists for us to experience, to take ourselves less seriously. Basically, that's the main reason for pain to exist. 
uh, and then to also experience the joy and wonder of an infinitely perfect universe. So then, how did you become a comedian? What brought you to the gift of laughter? Um, there's something just like interactional, something where if we can play together, that's going to make me happy. And if you can kind of, um, if I can make you smile and make you giggle, then I feel connected to you. And um, that was probably the origins of it. But I think you pointed out a great connection is that we do, we do somehow able to relate or that connection is quicker through laughter, right, than through conversation, through explanation, through theory, through anything else. So it is the fastest way for two people to connect. Plato said weird. that we can learn more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. What do you want people to walk away with besides a good laugh? How do you want people to feel? What do you want them to see or experience when they leave your spiritual comedy festival? I love the idea of comedy as a darshan, where you go to an event and you laugh and you cry. There's some kind of experience that unites everybody and it's it's not even a religious, it's not religious, it's more accessible. It's like appeals to every single person because it's about the human experience and the transcendent uh, nature of reality. You're saying that sense of humor can be learned. So if I wanna to learn to have a better sense of humor and use it every day, yeah. what would you suggest I do? So in my mind, my my sense of humor comes from my, it's really like a sense. Rather than it being outside of me, it's really my own sense of what's funny. What tickles me, either physically or emotionally or intellectually or spiritually, what makes me go, ah, what is that? <laughs> Where, you know, you just look at something and and, and there's a dissonance, or there's an absurdity, or there's a, there's a frustration, and you let it affect you. And instead of getting upset with it, or you, get, you let it be funny. Or maybe there are things that are actually funny, and you, and you listen to comedy regularly, and you start, to, you start to just take note in the same way that happiness can be a practice, that, you could, that gratitude can be a practice, or that anger can be a practice you actually can start to practice noticing what's tickling me. What's funny? <laughs> you know, what, mm. what, what is tickling me about my body in this moment? What is, and the ongoing practice of that. And just keep building on that tickle. Yes, yeah. And, and you keep can, that tickle going, and then suddenly you'll just have many more tickles. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll just become bigger and, and better. Yeah, yeah. And it's all based on what's really here. That's what I love about it. It's not based on what's happening outside. For years and years, I was doing stand-up comedy and I was frustrated and scared to express myself and trying to please the audience and trying to please the other comics and trying to fit this ideal about uh, what's funny and who thinks what is funny and it just, it just stopped me up and it would have me tense and I would sit trying to write and, well, will they think that's funny? It wasn't like I was consciously trying to do that, but I was always focused on what other people would think. And it completely arrested my creativity and it just was, it was really unpleasant and I was caught in this whole set of beliefs around uh, I'm not enough. And my particular version of that was I'm not funny enough. And for some reason I deemed that that was a really important thing. And so you were telling yourself that your jokes weren't funny enough? Yeah, how I'm performing isn't funny enough. What I have to say isn't funny enough. It's not hard hitting enough. It's not important enough. It's not unique enough. It's, it's not making the audiences die with laughing enough. But the more that I told myself that, the less 
freedom I had in my body and, and, and the less, you know, the more I would sort of just be gauging, oh, do you, you think that's funny? Are you gonna, are you gonna laugh? It's like being in a codependent relationship. It's like the person is probably not going to be that into you. So it occurred to me after doing a lot of healing work. Um, again, I, I turned to the spiritual realm to start to um, work with and release some of these beliefs. And what I came to was realizing my sense of humor is exactly perfect for who I am. I'm totally enough. And not only that, I'm totally funny enough for me. Because if I think it's funny, then it, that's enough for, for me. And if I actually enjoy what I have to say and what I'm thinking about and I'm having fun in my life, in my experience with interacting with people or with trees or flowers or rabbits, and that makes me have fun, and then I actually share my own joy with you, that's a whole other world where it really doesn't matter whether you like it or not because it's, it's an experience of, um, of me enjoying my life and that's the whole reason I'm doing comedy. So getting on stage, do yeah. you ever experience stage fright where you're just, oh, how do I, how can I be funny, you know, and naturally funny, right? It's hard to be up there hard. naturally. It's really hard. All time. So what do you do then? It really is just a matter of preparation. The more I prepare, the better I feel. So I take whatever leftover fear there is and I just use it for my aliveness. And, I, and if I'm fully prepared and I say, I know exactly what I'm going to talk about um, and I use my exercises of projecting positivity onto people, that's a really huge thing. It's like I could be in the middle of a show and if there isn't a laugh at the very first joke where there should be a laugh, I can certainly have an hour and 10 minutes of, oh my God, this is awful. You guys don't think I'm funny and there's this whole, and I, yeah. on the outside I'm like, ah, and, the, 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 and on the inside I'm like, ah, what am I doing wrong? And it's going worse and worse and worse. So it's really important to have some mind control to be able to, to have uh, mastery over your thoughts because your thoughts create your emotions. It works sometimes to actually just speak the truth and say, wow, I thought that was gonna be a lot funnier. <laughs> it's not. Oh well, and, and sometimes that actually works to relax people, to name what's present, and to speak the truth, and people often laugh at that. So that's, that's a great suggestion. The other, you think, so you do project on positivity while you're doing this. I should, it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but how do you do the mastery where you're like, okay, this is not going the way I would like it to go or imagine, Yeah. right? You're on stage. And it's uh, just spiraling downward and I'm right. you got dying a tough audience. and the people are just, and they're just folding their arms and they're frowning and they're, all of that? Yeah. Is that What's, what you're talking yeah. about? So what, yeah, and the fact that you can recover from that, right? So a lot of people don't recover from that. You mean like the next day? The next day. <laughs> or in the, the middle. Or you go back to being a comedian again. <laughs> yeah, the fact that I, yeah, it's, um, so one of the things, one of the tools I use is breathing. It's actually really simple, but it's really transformative. So if I'm in my downward spiral in the middle of a show and I'm starting to think everything's awful, then I start to tense up and then they feel me tense and they're worried because I'm worried. So in that moment, I'll often just take a really deep breath and pause and I'll actually let them in more because usually what happens is when I'm worried and upset, I'll tense up and then I bring up my walls and then those walls are met by their walls and then there's just nothing going back and forth. So if I can actually let them into my vulnerable experience and, and even just like become aware of what's really happening with me, which might be some sadness, some 
some wish that, that it were different. And if I can soften in that moment, they'll immediately start to feel me and go, oh, wow, you're human. Huh, I can relate to you. You have needs and feelings. And suddenly we're starting to have an energetic flow back and forth. Pretty soon the next joke I share is going to feel a lot more real because it's going to come through my genuine emotion and they're going to be surprised by it and they're going to laugh. So if people don't want to use breathing technique, yoga, meditation, they prefer to do it through laughter. How should they bring laughter in each day? Do you have a technique to help them do that? I totally do. Do you want to play? <laughs> yeah, I love to see it. <laughs> okay, so my favorite laughter technique is to start by tricking people. And I like to just have people breathe into their chest and take a deep breath and let out a ha sound. So it's just like, ha. And what's great about this is you don't actually have to already think something is funny because your body is already receiving the biological signals that, um, that relax, that reduce cortisol, that release endorphins. So if you just start to make this ha sound, ha. <laughs> so you're just saying ha, oh, you're like ha. That's exactly it. So it's the, it's the sound of the heart chakra is the ah. And then just by adding a ha, you get, you're get laughing to the irreverence. at the same time. Yes, you do. And then you get to add a little bit of. Um, some people are like, ah, oh, don't make me laugh. I'm in a different mood. I'm feeling frustrated or I'm feeling tired. Or So I like people to just express whatever, whatever emotion they're feeling with that ha sound. And then it starts to get transformed over time. So it's, it's a lot more of an authentic experience. So, some, so, I mean, maybe you're already, ah, and you can do that, ah, but you might just be in a traffic jam. And you're just like, ha, 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 And then you go through the steps, and then a minute later, you're like, ha, 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 And then it actually starts to become real. What about the power poses that we were talking about earlier? Oh, I love the power poses. So I'm a big fan of uh, what laughter does. The, the physiological stuff that laughter does, it, it detoxifies us. It's, it's also similar to crying. When you cry, if you can laugh as hard, so hard that you cry, you're, you're getting toxins released in your tears. And then all of these similar things happen with this power posing. So if you can combine them and you can, um, you can do like the, uh, the I'm awesome <laughs> kind of pose and, and then laugh at the same time. This is like mega beyond chemicals all releasing testosterone and oxytocin. If you can go, ah, oh, yay, I'm awesome, you're wonderful, and you, you like bring it all in. I'm just, I'm a little high. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, it's, it's scientifically, it's been shown yeah. to work if you do that before you go into an event yeah. or an interview, let's say a date, an interview, even like a we date. we could do it right, right? before this. Yeah. And it works. It actually helps people to go in with a positive perspective and actually nail it, nail whatever it is they're trying to nail. Yeah. So I, I find it fascinating that, as you were saying, there are chemical charges that are going on yeah. that's working for you. And how, how would you say it raises your vibrational level in, in how long do you this one have to do it for? Do you think for it to be effective? So what I've heard is 30 seconds of a pose and to do it a few times a day is starts to have it be effective and that what we're whatever disposition we're holding in our bodies whether that's um, a serious disposition you know if you're holding this and you're holding tension or if you're holding laughter, whatever you're holding, you want to do more of that. And that uh, set of poses and muscles being held releases a set of chemicals. So why not choose the ones that 
that affect our emotional state in a positive way. And I think vibrationally, it's like I'm focused on what's going well. I'm focused on that everything here is relaxed so I can be available to you. I just want to thank you for being with us mm. and showing us the path to lightness. Thank and you. Fun and spirituality all in one. I wish you'd be spiritual and have fun while we're in it. I love it. Thank you so much. It's Thanks. just an absolute pleasure to be with you.